the point is, right now, with the coming of Heaven's Cross, there's a lot of intensity. Four and a half months to go before that epic event is here. As Linda and Calder told you during their opening remarks, uh, we recently did a, a project called Heaven's Cross, preparing for the opening, where I discuss in detail uh, global hopelessness, and it's at an all-time high, higher than ever in the history, including the time of the fall of Atlantis. Wow. There is a hopelessness that's like a dark cloud over the world right now. I, I say that 85% of humans feel a notable degree of hopelessness one way or the other. And it doesn't mean their total life is hopelessness, but they feel a, a notable degree of it to where it's holding them back, keeping them from things. Heaven's Cross is occurring or is coming up soon, and it was only until a few days ago that literally we didn't have the exact date. We, we knew the general time frame, and it kept on narrowing in. And it's all contingent on the level of consciousness on the planet, because the level of consciousness determines then the, uh, the flows of energy that are coming in to the individual, mm -hmm. but ultimately to the planet. The level of consciousness has to do with, uh, with Gaia's departure. Uh, the more consciousness there is, the easier it is for her to clear out, for her to ascend, which she literally will do. Uh, so that has an effect, and, and therefore you can all, almost imagine the energy, kind of a vortex, the suction that takes place. Gaia is leaving as consciousness increases. You've got that kind of that uh, that jet stream, that, uh, that suction behind with her leaving, that creates a, a void to be filled with consciousness, but also there's a lot of conflict in it. Uh, humans are conflicted and they're pointing the finger at whose fault the environment is. I truly wish that some Shambra would step up and do something, a presentation, a movie, uh, or whatever it is, informing and educating the world that this is that what's happening with the environment is not a thing about who messed up where uh it's not about that it is about gaia leaving and that's a sacred event that's a, a absolutely sacred blessed event it means there is enough consciousness and humans now have the capabilities through consciousness and technology to handle the planet to take care of this beautiful paradise that that you're living in. So instead of all the shame and the guilt and the finger pointing uh, and, and the new rules and the regulations, uh, that somebody would step up and point out to the world, here's really what's happening. Now let's approach it from that point of view rather than this, this destruction and shame uh, type of thing. So we, we have all these things happening on the planet right now. You've got the power vortex uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, you've got uh, energy situations that we've talked about this ad nauseum. But my point is that now what happens is these all work together right now. They converge to bring this thing called Heaven's Cross. Now, Heaven's Cross, what is that? Up until now, there's been this, you call it the veil oftentimes, a veil separating the heavens. Earth is a heaven. It's a dimension. And that's my definition of heaven. Mm. It's a dimension. If it's a state of being, uh, it's a state of grace, mm. which is sometimes not so graceful. So you've got this situation now with that veil is, is starting to open. Uh, the cracks in it, so to speak, but not bad cracks, good cracks. Uh, openings in this veil that separated human from divine for so very long. The separation wasn't because of anything bad. It wasn't because uh, uh, Adam and Eve and, you know, geez, uh, Eve messed up, screwed it up for all of you, ate the apple, and nothing like that. It was simply to create a place, uh, a, a kind of a state of reality in which the angelic beings could experience in a very, very different way. And it had to be pretty much sealed off. Otherwise, it wouldn't have worked. It had to be isolated from the divine. Uh, and you notice 
uh, not much gets back through the, the other way either, uh, whether it's ghosts or aliens or anything else. It was, it was pretty much sealed up. But now that is beginning to go away slowly, but holes in it or, or tears in the fabric of mass consciousness. Because there is enough real, pure consciousness on the planet, brought in by the likes of you and others who have gone within themselves, not trying to find the answers out there. It has to, all roads have to lead back within. And there are no gurus, there are no masters, there's not even ascended uh, masters who are going to do it for you. And so I'm constantly trying to get you to turn the road back within yourself. Everything is here. Now I point here, not like the physical body and certainly not, not Kaldra, you know, per se, but everything is already there. As Heaven's Cross opens, it's a, it's a planetary event, but you're also opening that line of separation between you and your own divine. Because you're no longer looking out there and going within, it creates that opening for more ease of the divine coming in, more consciousness, more ease and grace with your own divinity existing together. We've talked about it for years. We've talked about, uh, and we've written books about that, living your divinity and all the rest of these things, and a degree of the divine came in. A degree of your true essence came in, but it was still limited in so many ways. Uh, it, was, it was difficult to have that free flow. Now with Heaven's Cross, that means more, more accessibility, more ease in just allowing your divinity. But while it's for you, it's also for the entire planet, if they are able to tune into it, if they're able to get it. It means that the ones coming after all of you, they will have a much easier time uh, and they'll wonder, well, what was the big deal about allowing your divinity? I mean, it's so simple. You just allow it and it's there. Well you didn't have that benefit of the Heaven's Cross uh, opening. You, you had to really work hard to get through the murk and the confusion and the, the layers and the shells of this bubble that in, it really enclosed uh, not only the planet but yourself. So this is a, a real game changer and, and I talk about it at length in the sessions we pr recently recorded. It's a real game changer on the planet. It's occurring March 22nd. We're going to be here with Caldra, Linda, and the crew here in Kona um, doing your webcast, doing a webcast for free, of course, and celebrating, honoring this beginning of the opening of Heaven's Cross. It doesn't all open at once. It's not like taking a floodgate and opening everything. It's like slowly start to open it. So. So that it stays in balance, so that it doesn't blow anybody out, so that uh, you can begin to feel into it. And the more you do, the more it opens. It, it really changes the potentials of everything on the planet. Humans will continue to do what they do, go their own way, continue to follow the routines up to a point. But now when, when they say no more, then they'll feel something. They'll feel that there's a difference. They'll feel that maybe they have more choices than ever before. And we really want to watch what happens on the planet, not necessarily on that day, but what happens on the planet in terms of some humans, even a small number, making different choices that make a huge difference in, uh, ultimately in the reality. And that's what's happening right now. Over these next four and a half months, there's a lot of intensity for you as Chambra. It's going to feel more intense than ever before. Wow. But, but yet with more, more, what we call them, small to medium realizations along the way, oh, okay. more breakthroughs for yourself. So okay. there'll be periods of, uh, okay. of a lot of intensity, followed by like, uh, duh, you just get it, to the, that kind of a breakthrough that, that occurs. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be times 
when your body just aches. Uh, you're, we're now in that period of coming into the Heaven's Cross, and the energies all start to really work over time, and, and your body's going to feel it. I know you and Calder both have experiences with the body aches and pains. And, uh, you know, there's going to be the tendency for you to, well, let me put it this way. We're getting more SOS calls on the other side. That's why I had to bring in Kathumi and a bunch of others. We're getting more SOS calls right now in the other realms because you're wondering that age-old question, what am I doing wrong? Right. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's actually, because you're doing it so right, it ends up affecting the body, and, and it ends up uh, affecting the mind. It, there's a lot of uh, kind of a friction and a releasing right now, and more. But the funny thing is that when I posed it to Shambhur before, I said, we could go slower, we could take it much <laughs> easier, it's going to take a little longer, we could go slower and it would be easier, or we can accelerate, we can go faster, but you're going to experience more physical and mental discomfort. Which do you want? I know which we picked. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so do I. You, you pick more. Let's just get this over with and done with. You know, let, let's do it fast. It's it's like uh, getting into a cold swimming pool. Do you go in like one inch at a time? You know, one centimeter at a time. Just a little, a little. Uh, some people do. That's their way of getting into a very cold swimming pool. Others dive right in. Well, Shambra are diver inners. Uh, they, they say, let's just get right into this and get it over with. So that's what's happening right now. You could go through and list anything that you have right now, uh, strange appetites and, uh, mm. and uh, depression and anxiety. It's not really uh, depression and anxiety. You can go through whatever you're going through right now Understand that it's all part of realization while staying in human form. It's every every little bit. Nothing is. There's no mistakes. Uh, uh, I know a lot of you lately are fumbling things a lot, and you're wondering what's going on. You're fumbling and you're dropping things and uh, you're spilling things, and then you think, "Oh, I'm such an idiot." No, no. Everything right now relates to. You are staying on the planet as a master and coming to Heaven's Cross. And with the added element now of Heaven's Cross, it, it adds to the overall interesting part of living as a planet, uh, living on the planet as a master. So I want to talk for a moment here a little bit more about what's actually going on uh, within you. I want to address the brain because it ties in more to the alt that we've been talking about. But you've you've got uh, some terms that are used in society, and then I have my own version of them. There's a term, uh, if you want to write it on the board. Okay. Neurotypical. 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 Two words. Okay. Uh, neuro. Uh, typical. Neuro. Neuro means nerves in in modern medicine and science generally nerves but if you go to the origins of the words neuro actually means feeling senses uh and so but oftentimes it's used simply in terms of nerves and and ultimately in terms of the workings of the brain and oftentimes the spine but neurotypical what is that well there it's a label used to identify uh, most people uh, saying most people are neurotypical, but uh, they're not typical at all. They're, they're, there's nothing typical about somebody who's locked into a body and, and a brain. So it's kind of a misnomer or you mislabel on there. Neurotypical. What is neurotypical? Does that mean that you function like everybody else? Does that mean that you have the same kind of a lockstep thoughts and ambitions and goals and neurotypical, the same desires. I mean, for, but this is neuro weird. I mean, <laughs> to be locked in the human condition and not wanting to get out necessarily, wanting to change it, maybe polish it up a little bit. But neurotypical would be wanting to get the hell out uh, of the condition mm -hmm. that is not your natural state of being. 
Uh, so they say it's neuro neurotypical, but right in parentheses underneath there, neuro weird. I mean, it's just weird. In to, parentheses. In parentheses, neuro weird. And again, remember uh, neuro having to do with nerves, but ultimately it's really feeling sensations, and not just physical, but it also has to do with belief systems and thinking patterns and everything else. That's neuro. Now. You've got another label here uh, that's uh, recently been brought up, um, I believe, in the Schomburg magazine. Uh, neurodivergent, oh. neurodivergent. Okay. And this is a way of uh, relabeling labels. <laughs> this is a way of. Is this two words? Yes, please. Neurodivergent. Uh, it, it's a it's a term being used right now to relabel labels. Uh, people with things like. Uh, um, ADD or Alzheimer's or things like that. They're neurodivergent. And I guess it's, it's going along with everything else in society saying, you know, let, let's be inclusive, which is good. But they're really not divergent. That's like saying you're neuro weirder than the neuro weird here. It's just putting a different label on it. It's saying, okay, you're different, but we accept that. But do we really? Do we really? You're different, uh, so we're going to label you differently. But my opinion is that neural divergent here is actually less weird because there's something occurring within the neurological system and, and the brain, of course, that is basically saying that uh, the um, – oh, we're having a little discussion about spelling over here. That doesn't matter. does not matter. I think it's E. Good. I think everybody gets it. You're just a little bit uh, divergent uh, spelling when you're put up here at the board. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, my, my, my point is neurodivergent, I, I don't really like that label because it's kind of saying you're special in a weird way. Well, what's happening in your divergency is there's something calling out from within you, uh, like, uh, like ADD or some of the other. Uh, what you call, they used to call them afflictions or diseases. They're not. They're simply your spirit calling out, your, your, your human slash divine self calling out and saying, there's something wrong with neurotypical. I got to get out of this. Uh, I am not typical as in accepting being locked in the box. Uh, I am not going to accept that this human um, persona is typical. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something neurally different, uh, and it's gonna ultimately help me get out of the box faster. So many of those who have uh, who, who have some of these things, these neurodivergencies, they're gonna get out of the box a whole lot faster. Particularly with Heaven's Cross, they're gonna access that a lot faster than somebody who's neuro boring typical. Because uh, the typical, they're just trying to make the box a little nicer. The divergents are saying, no, we, we know this ain't right. And it's affecting our brain, which will actually continue to make us want to get out of here faster. So there's the neurotypical, which is really shouldn't be typical, and, and the, the divergent. I have one for Chambra, a, a term that I use for Chambra. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Um, and, and again, I want to go back to talking a little bit about, ask you to feel in for a moment into your neurological system. <clears throat> the neurological system that you have, yes, Bell is agreeing with what we're doing here, saying, yes, it's so right. I can feel it. I can, I can see what's happening here. She's neurodivergent. That's true. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, Chambra, uh, the, the neurology, your system, uh, is, is your nerves, of course, connected by the, a massive communication system that's, that's uh, prevalent in your body. And it's always talking, it's always communicating. Uh, sometimes it miscommunicates, it misfires, but you've got this huge... Uh, network that's occurring there and can easily get messed up. Easily get messed up. Now, so Linda uh, Calder gave you the word before. Go ahead and write it on the board. Okay. 
I, I give a, a new definition, not necessarily able, but a new definition for Shambra that has to do with your what you're going through in your neurology right now, which is basically the communications in your body. Neural tinnitus. Neural tinnitus, made up of the words neuro, nerves, tuning, or in this case, retuning. You're retuning everything in your body. Itis, itis, uh, basically, uh, it sounds nice to end it with itis, but uh, itis meaning kind of a, uh, an affliction, something that's happening. So I say uh, Shambra has this neural tinnitus, and it's causing a lot of issues because you're, would you write retuning right under here? Retuning. You are retuning right now. And it's intensifying, particularly with Heaven's Gate. You're retuning mm. your mind in particular. Mm. And I give it another name if you forget uh, this word, uh, neural tinnitus. It's a name I made up. If you forget that, uh, alt brain. Two words, alt brain. Okay. Many of you have been experiencing alt brain lately. It's you can't remember. Um, you can't remember shit. Uh, you have the CMS. Can't remember shit. <laughs> And then you get upset with yourself and say, I can't even remember. I must be getting old or uh, maybe I smoked too much pot when I was young or too much right now. And what's happening with my system and, and uh, I, I, I can't remember what day it is and uh, my logic isn't working anymore and none of these things. You just have, you have alt brain. There's nothing wrong with this. You are retuning every part of yourself right now. The biggest thing you could do is understand what's happening, that all the communications to all those nerves in your brain and your body are, are being redone, remodeled. <laughs> you're doing it while you're staying in the physical body. Some of the ones who have crossed over recently simply just couldn't handle it anymore. They, they just, it was too much for them to handle, and that's why so many have crossed over lately. Uh, I'm encouraging you that, or letting you know you don't have to do that, but you can do this thing on the fly, staying in the physical body, the neural tinnitus, uh, the, now the, the Shamba replacement for neural divergent that's occurring. And you're going to, but you're going to feel it. You're going to, your brain will become foggier at times. Uh, your, your ability to recall facts and data foggier. You're remembering your own name, Foggy, at times, and it gets that way. And then you panic, and then you, you get anxiety. Oh, what's happening to me? That's the time to take a deep breath and remember, alt brain. You got alt brain. You got you got this whole condition that's caused, particularly as we speed up now, like we've we're going at uh, light speed now, warp speed, right towards heaven's cross, and. It's going to intensify alt brain. Uh, there is, there's, but it's kind of funny, and that's why I brought Kadumi in to help you to understand. It's kind of funny. What's going on? All these massive changes, and then the beauty is that you're right in the middle of all these changes and wondering what's wrong with your brain. You forgot to put your pants on. You go to work and and realize that there, <laughs> it's you forgot. It's pretty funny, and then. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a, a wonderful realization. It's one of those aha things. It's like realization that's been sitting there waiting for the last five years, ten years, or whatever, and, and a realization about something, about, uh, about the, the way energy works or about, about the way uh, your life has been being guided, essentially, uh, even un unbeknownst to you, guided by your divinity. Uh, realizations can be just about anything, but suddenly that boom, oh. Well, what's happening is that with this uh, whole changeover in the wiring, uh, it seems really cloudy for a while, but then as the, it's not a rewiring, uh, but as the new way, uh, uh, as the brain backs away and now more of the real divine intelligence comes in, uh, then it's the, these breakthroughs that are so amazing, so 
you can say they're so simple, they're so obvious, you wonder, why, why didn't I realize that before? And the realization is a feeling, it's not just a mind thought. It, 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 you can feel it in every part of your body, and it's such a huge relief. But then the next day you might go back to, back to the, uh, our uh, neural tinnitus, uh, back to the foggy brain and not uh, being able to see things clearly. Don't worry, that, that changes. You're just in that whole state of being. There's a couple of things that you can do that actually make it a little easier. I'll give you the typical things, breathing and uh, uh, light exercise and that. Eating the foods that your body is asking for, not that the brain is telling you should eat. Uh, that's very important right now. The foods that your body is asking to eat. In other words, the diets and everything else, forget about. But there's another one, too, uh, that's uh, a reason why some of you might be experiencing more intense um, emotions and intense pain in your body. If you're doing something in your life right now that's not really your passion, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, uh, no matter what it is, if you're doing something that's not your passion, in other words, you really don't want to be doing it, but you feel trapped that you need to continue doing it, <clears throat> that's going to cause a lot of extra stress. That's going to cause uh, more of, the, of, of our neurotinnitus symptoms. It's best right now, if you're not happy with these situations, make a change. Don't just think about it. Don't just talk about it. It's either that or in the next four and a half months it could be very, very challenging for you because you're doing something that's really not you. That's not your real heart's choice. It's not your passion. You're doing it because you need a job or you're afraid to leave the relationship or whatever. It's just going to make your neural tinnitus worse because your body your nerves, your brain are all trying to retune right now. Neural tune-itis. They're all trying to retune. It's and it's not just your light body. It's your the it's the whole brain backing down, moving aside at this time of coming to heaven's cross that it's so important right now to be in your passion. To get rid of the stuff that doesn't really belong to you to and you say, well, but I don't know what my passion is. Stop saying that. You do know what it is. And it might be something totally different than what you're doing right now. But pursue it. At least take steps towards it. It doesn't mean you have to leave your boring, you know, mid-manager level job right now, but take steps towards doing something, being the artist that, that you've wanted to be, or a street clown, or opening a restaurant. T start taking those steps. And the degree of challenges that you have with uh, the Chambra neural tinnitus or Alprain will drastically go down. You're going to feel much happier. Same with relationships. And if you say, "Well, I, I just, you know, I can't leave because of fill in the blank," then just find more time to yourself. Take off for a couple of weeks. Tell the people around you that you need this break. That you just got to get away. Uh, and, and take that time for yourself right now. It's so important because it's all intensifying right now, coming up to Heaven's Cross. Once that opening occurs, there will be, for so many Chambra, there will be almost like a flood of energies, divinity coming in. And uh, while you jump up and down and say, well, that's, isn't, that's great, but if you're kind of in that out of balance place and uh, you're you're doing things that you know just aren't right for you it'll really hit you uh, it eventually serve you very well but it could hit you hard at first so right now be aware first of all that all this is taking place all this is going on within you i've labeled it uh, right up here with the typical human labels of Neurotypical, neurodivergent, I've labeled it neural tinnitus or alt brain. Alt brain. So there's going to be a lot happening 
in these next few months. I'll, I've done this recent, uh, what they call a cloud class, recent thing called uh, opening, opening to heaven's cross, opening to the probabilities, opening to the potentials that are coming in, open, or preparing for the opening that's coming about. I'll do a few more in between, particularly getting you through this whole neural tinnitus thing. It, it's the nerves and the way that everything is communicated with them from the brain that's taking place, particularly in the brain right now, and particularly as the brain steps aside. Let's take a good deep breath with that. That's uh, the most common question asked these days, so what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling that way? I'm a master on the planet. Why am I feeling the aches and the pains? Why, why am I fumbling stuff all the time, dropping things or even falling down myself? Why, why can't I just keep things organized the way I, I used to? Why, why, why doesn't it make sense? And then you, you're so hard on yourself. Just remember, alt-brain. You're rewiring. You're redoing yourself uh, in such an intense way right now. Remember it was you when I said we could do this nice and slow or go really fast. You say, let's just get it over with. Let's take a good deep breath with that. It's actually an amazing time to be here. Amazing time if, if you can deal with it, with all the, the weird things going on on the earth, but also within yourself. It's truly an amazing time to be on this planet and to be right in the midst of all this happening right now. 